I'm really familiar with this area, and it really drives home what we're here to talk about today. And I think that, that there's some very key things. And, and one is, is that we are moving into just the key decision time having to do with water in California. And if you look at the history of California uh, in the last century, there are these times that the window would open for decision making, when there'd be a chance that the planets would align and you could get something done. We are at that time right now. We haven't been for 15 or 30 years, and so it's very important. And I'm going to uh, not necessarily assume much information, so I apologize if I start from a, a different level than some of you have, but I really want to bring you all up to where we are together. And I think it's also worth mentioning, uh, I always joke that uh, for somebody that has been in politics and government and public policy for 40 years, I always wanted to work for somebody who would do what they thought was right and be fearless and just face the consequences. And who knew that was going to be Jerry Brown? Uh, uh, but it is. He has faced into the prisons and lowered the population by 50,000. He's faced into the budget and uprighted it for the first time in 10 years. He's trying to affect where money goes for schools in a way that people haven't been asking about that for a long time. And he's determined that we get to a water solution for the next 50 years while he is governor. And if you look at sort of what has happened in the run-up to this, uh, the legislative package in 2009 is very significant because it was a give and take compromise that involved a bond, various things having to do with how we operate water in California. Uh, the bond dealt with storage. It had statements about trying to deal with reliance on the Delta over, the, over time. But it really had two key things in it, which is for the first time, there are dual co-equal goals for a project on water out of the Delta. And it is that we will restore or at least enhance the ecosystem of the Delta and we will determine what water can reliably be taken from the Delta over time. And we will do them together because as I am fond of saying, um, everybody in California is firmly committed to one of the two goals. And yet, there's this certain elegance that people realize that their goal can't be met unless you meet the other goal. And when the water project was approved and developed in the 60s and 70s, it was done at a time that many of the modern environmental laws were not in place. A CEQA was not in place, Endangered Species was not in place, uh, the federal NIPA was not in place. And what's happened is there have been court fights and other fights over 40 years to really address some of the questions that would have been addressed when you were doing a project at the beginning if those laws were in place. And so now uh, we are doing the Bay Delta Conservation Plan, which is really a conservation plan. It's under the Endangered Species Act. How do you determine how to deal with the species while at the same time determine how to have a reliable source of water so everything is built in at once? And when the water project was built, uh, you, you know, it, it's like anything. Uh, uh, I was a mayor. Uh, we were responsible for a water system that was twice as large as the city I lived in and customers and, and served the region. But you constantly had to adjust. <coughs> you constantly had to upgrade if facilities were getting old. Conservation was not part of the original ethic at the time many things were built in the 40, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And so we're trying to do that now and take those into account. And uh, the conservation plan really envisions a project in the Delta. It envisions uh, two tunnels that go roughly uh, 30 or 35 miles around the Delta, hook in at the Sacramento River and get to the pumps at the South Delta and into the aqueduct and the water system. Uh, those are important for reliability because uh, if, if, and I, uh, somebody asked about it in a TV thing I just did, when there is a major earthquake 
for when there's flooding or when there are issues with climate change that come that go either way, uh, there is a possibility of service interruption. And if it's a, 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 an extreme event, it could be a service interruption of a particular amount of time. And if you look at what happened with the court cases uh, that were five or six years ago, even the pumps being turned off for a matter of days dramatically impacted some people that depended uh, on that water system. And so hand in hand with the dual goals is we will do restoration in the Delta. And when Europeans arrived in California, there were 500,000 acres of wetlands in the Delta. There are 31,000 now. One of the reasons there are crashing populations is the pumps that really reverse flows in the South Delta, uh, draw fish into the pumps, and in the lower <coughs> flow season, with the salinity being in the San Francisco Bay, the salinity moves into the Delta. So you have water quality issues, you have issues of habitat, uh, oh, there are many different things there. And, and the Delta has become an armored set of islands. And because of the farming that's gone on inside of them, there's been subsidence, so some of the islands are dramatically below sea level. These are the issues that we're facing. And if you look at the California economy, uh, agriculture is a key piece of it. Urban Southern California is a key piece of it. When the water project was built, people just assumed it was the San Joaquin Valley and Southern California. Well, now the Silicon Valley relies 50% on Delta water. In the time of a drought, that's 80 or 90%. So the economic engine of the Silicon Valley is tied into this. Spurs to um, San Luis Obispo into Santa Barbara County are there, so they're central coastal areas. There's even eastern Alameda County is getting Delta water. So this is much broader for what it is. And, it's, and the real challenge is, is that if we don't do anything, if the status quo is allowed to remain the same, uh, that Delta system will just continue to deteriorate and the amount of water that can come from there will be severely under challenge. And so it means we have to do something. We have to take advantage of this. And that means balancing those broad interests of California to get it done. Uh, in a bit, we have an engineer and we have somebody that's done the cost benefit and the financing analysis so that you can get a flavor of this with me leading with the public policy and what's happening. And we have been rolling out the draft parts of the plan. We will have the last chapters of the draft plan next month and we will also have in a period of time in the near future the draft environmental impact report. And so we will, by the summer, have those documents out in a way that we will start moving down the process of taking comments on an environmental impact report and trying to be able to make a decision uh, sometime next year, hopefully early next year, but sometime next year, that starts us marching down the path to a project. And there are many interests in California uh, they, well, there's just many different interests, and so it's really trying to balance all the different interests in terms of who pays, uh, how you balance the wetlands and the project, how you deal with the different regions of the state, how it impacts the, uh, a bond at some point, a, a, and the other pieces of it. Now, recently there has been what is known as the portfolio alternative that has been proposed by some water agencies uh, around the state and also NRDC and some environmental groups. And, and it envisions a 3,000 cubic foot per second tunnel. And, and just for comparison, the peripheral canal of the 1982 ballot measure uh, was 33,000 cubic feet per second. A year ago, the proposal were tunnels that were 15,000. We believe 9,000 at gravity flow provides the reliability that you need and is at a reasonable level to feel, have people feel more trusting and, and meets the science and the environmental issues. They propose 3,000. We will study it. But, uh, and then on wetlands, we propose, uh, whether it's 
habitat in conjunction with farming, land habitat, aquatic habitat, coming back to 145,000 acres uh, there over the next 50 years to help with the habitat restoration. And then there are these other goals that we really want to meet that I mentioned, reliability in an extreme event, conservation and recycling across the state. Uh, encouraging people for integrated watershed management or projects that they might be able to come up with at the local level, uh, doing it in an energy efficient way. And so if you look at the portfolio alternative, uh, they have the smaller facility. I think a key question is whether it presents reliability either with the dual goals or uh, in the event of extreme event. They want to do less wetlands restoration they want to leave the South Delta pumps in place, which we would prefer to have lesser reliance on them over time. And so there is a fundamental difference about the fact that that probably does not accomplish the goals that we would like to do in looking at a project for 25 years or 30 years. And then just maybe closing, because I know there'll be a lot of questions. I think the key thing about this uh, that is uh, difficult is the interest is most heightened in Northern California uh, where there isn't necessarily the same benefit and where the benefit is here, the interest isn't as heightened. So we really have to count on you uh, from this point forward to start to inform yourself, to be involved as the environmental documents come out, to make sure your legislators are aware of this, to make sure the public understand they're connected to the system and that it just doesn't come out of a tap it is a result of uh, an elaborate system that gets the water here. And uh, I think it's very important to weigh in and do that because, and the hardest thing is, and I know, I is that people want to pencil out a project and see exactly what it'll do. And even the law these days say you have to pencil it out against the current thing. But if we do not do a project in the next few years, uh, you're really competing against probably a deteriorating delta and really being challenged rather than what the current amount is. So it is very, very important to do something. And in th the one other thing <coughs> is that conservation and recycling were part of the portfolio alternative. We all agree. <laughs> and I was, uh, I was the author when I was in the legislature of a great deal of conservation measures from urban uh, outdoor landscape irrigation to the 20 percent uh, goal of reducing per capita by 2020, of ag water measurement, uh, of the latest generation of low flow toilets, and I even had the bill that legalized those illegal waterless urinals uh, so that they were legal in the building code. But there is a trade-off. We save but it means we have to be more reliability with what we have left, more reliable, because you lose the flex in the system. Uh, my legislative district included the Monterey Peninsula when I was in the legislature. They had a state water board order that they had to cut by two-thirds the amount of water they were taking from the Carmel River because they were significantly overdrafting. They have arguably, per capita, conserved that since that time 38% of the water consumption in that water district in the Monterey area. That means that if there's a significant drought, they do not have the flex left. They are really at the nub. So they really have to be reliable with what they deliver now. And so that is the trade-off. That is one of the reasons we're working so hard. We recognize that conservation is a significant piece of the problem. And and when I was on in the legislature, people were always surprised that some guy from the Central Coast would point out that this area, the entire uh, greater Los Angeles metropolitan area, had grown by three million people in the last generation on the same amount of water. That basically conservation and efficiency had taken care of the growth here. But it means we have to develop a system that is more reliable for what is still being delivered and that's what we're going to do, and that's why we need your help. And I'll really look forward to questions during the question period.